Like everybody wore name name badges. Or uh, if when Google Glass comes in, then I can just be like, you know, the old identifier. Because I remember people, but it's just names are tough, especially with the, uh, you know, the associated drinking and gig uh, that kind of blurs the memory a little. I think it's like a cool way to do it. I think like um, aesthetics make music quite interesting. Um, obviously the music itself, and it's kind of nice to have a couple other things to go with it. And it's kind of a good way to uh, vary projects as well. Um, but like, you know, space is a cool thing, but not every band can pull it off. I'd love to sing about space in my solo work, maybe. But Tiger Rooms is much more appropriate. Uh, yeah, it's nice, it's nice to, as well as having different sounds, have different aesthetics because it really breaks things out. Uh, and it's fun. I guess like with the solo stuff I can write really personally. Like there's things that you can say in a band um, that you uh, couldn't say solo. And there's something you can say solo that you couldn't have said in a band, I think. You can make it, yeah, pretty intensely uh, intensely personal, um, but there's also like, um, I guess there's a lot of uh, play in there for like symbolism or whatever, and if I, I think if I was reading the lyrics to some of those songs um, just as they were without my intentions or without sometimes, I have like little dialogue boxes in the lyrics as well um, that you can't really convey when you're singing it, uh, that would explain, would explain the song a bit better. So lyrics in their written form are probably, it's easy to understand as long as it is on face value. Um, yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> So then I was like, I power recorded it, and I guess because it was so new to me, it was like my favorite song as well, and so I really wanted to get out in the world. Um, but I think the logical conclusion is, that as a single, was to release Swing Left because it was a uh, was slightly different in terms of uh, I guess I guess maybe Lone Tiger fit with the rest of the stuff better, and Swing Left was a good chance to show that there might have been a little more depth to the songwriting or um, a different way. Uh, a different way I could take things in the future as well. It's good. I think it's a good. Uh, it's a good starting point for what's to come. Not stylistically, but the fact that things can. There's room to move, uh, so that I'm not, you know, releasing the same material every time I release. Uh, release something, which works for some artists, but I think for longevity's sake, it's good to keep progressing as a songwriter and, and stylistically as well. I think that's my favorite one at the moment, so it's kind of like being Stan. Uh, you know, everything else I kind of make up is generally whatever I found funny um, before I start drinking on the night, and then that makes its way uh, uh, onto the stage. So, New Orlando Magic, it's got a good ring to it, it reminds me of the 90s, which is nice. So. Yeah, I think it'll stay for a bit. Um, are you, have you thought about how appropriate it is considering that your um, solo band is now five people and that's an encore basketball team? Yeah, it's the starting five. Yeah. If I wasn't going to call that, it'd be Jeremy Neal in the starting five. Uh, but ooh, Jeremy Neal's starting five. And then someone suggested also Jeremy Neal's Space Jam. There's a lot of ones floating around. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah. Very appropriate. Until I get the jerseys though. Yeah. Um, I think it's a kind of good break. It was kind of the way of doing a ballad without actually doing a ballad. Um, because on an album, I mean, I've definitely got a ballad written, and I had a ballad that I started recording even for a ballad. By the like, way, I mean like a. Uh, I don't know, like a very 60s soul kind of slow, yeah, slower song, still full production, um, but um, I think maybe that much of a dip was too much for an EP.
Is it too hot? Mysteriously disappear and finish the interview. Yeah. At the car. Yeah. It's Is that funny? Yeah. Could I? Yeah. Um, I don't. Uh, I had hoped it would work out, and it did, which was nice. Uh, I don't know. I thought it was a really interesting way to do things because I remember, like, many years ago, uh, Ben Salter one for his album and he popped a whole bunch of slack for it like um and was like you shouldn't be asking people to find your music or whatever and but if you look at it in the way that it's just a pre-order for people who are really interested in having the cd it's like the way uh that you can make the cd better by uh you know it's it just it's an investment in future product that you get so i think it's a, a great system um and I was very fortunate that it, it, it worked for them and then I could press the vinyl uh, and, and press the CDs, which after 12 months of touring really heavily, um, I was bankrupt, so it was probably without, you know, borrowing money or family, uh, seemed like a logical way to do it, to see if people were interested enough to pre-order, uh, and people were, so that's really cool. <laughs> Not yet. I'm gonna do the dinner dates uh, once the vinyl comes out. So after you meet her and after the vinyl's out, then uh, it's Porto time. Um, and also, uh, somebody bought the recording day as well. Uh, so I'm gonna record uh, Baba Ganoush uh, at Sega Dreamboat Studios. Yeah. The, the Charles South at Bilbin. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Ruby and Jack. Yeah, Ruby and Jack. <laughs> you know? Is one of like dinner dates tomorrow? Uh, yes. Uh, so yeah. I'm taking the family out to the Lynn's Indian restaurant uh, at uh, Rosalie, which is a fantastic restaurant. If anybody likes Indian food, you know, it's super Yeah? Yeah. I've been received uh, in Sydney and Melbourne so far, uh, which is great. Melbourne was a pretty long weekend. Adelaide was the same. Adelaide was um, packed house, and uh, even uh, even Newcastle worked out. So you know, sometimes Newcastle doesn't work out, but it worked out. Oh, I like Richard Cuthbert and the Nits. So that's K N I T S. Uh, Adam Bombs. Good dance. You know, it's coming around summertime, so I'm gonna get to wear a lot of short shorts, which is good. Um, I'm gonna do a little recording of the uh, Ross Raptor album over, over the summer. Uh, I've been writing for a new solo release, so I might start working on that as well. Uh, and then uh, Teen Sensations are working on an EP, Tiger Things are working on an EP. Uh, I'll try and stagger them so it's not all in the same week. But uh, it's, 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 a pretty, it's a pretty exciting summer for writing and recording. It's just that it's going to be interesting now that we're hitting the recording phase um, because we've got to send them to different studios over there. So we're going to send them to uh, record with Simon Bergfinger at the Laboratory of the Studios. Uh, so we're going to be doing a lot of the work here with Sean Cook uh, and then mixing with a few other people. So maybe we can get that figure. So we're somehow out of people being in other countries. 
things, we're going to make a cohesive album. I just think it's logistically a little tougher than otherwise. But everything else is still cool. I mean, the friendship's still all there. Which is just the main thing about the band anyway, like it was just a bunch of kind of mates hanging out anyway, so that still exists. We're just kind of trying to petition James Fletch and Jamie to move back at some point because we can't imagine life in Europe being as good as it is here. Because they don't have us anymore. So yeah, that one I went to talk to James Boyd the other day. Oh, what did he say? Oh, did you talk to him the other yeah, day? Yeah, he interviewed him. Oh, yeah. Does he want to come back? Uh, he, he says when he has the money. Oh, uh, I'll pay for him to come back. <laughs> next time you interview him, yeah. Kickstarter, James Boyd Kickstarter. Yeah, next time you interview him, tell him that I will put it on my credit card so he can come back. I want him stuck over there. Can I build you these things? I'll build them with my own. down to putting out a shout out on the Facebook page, which did work recently in Newcastle. Um, but I guess I kind of had this attitude of, uh, um, I kind of had this attitude of uh, just kind of putting everything on credit card and hoping it works out. So, you know, and it's the same thing I'll say every time, it's just that like, you only have one chance to be you, and if you don't, you know, don't shoot for it, you know, uh, chase it down, then you won't know. You need to get a really big credit card debt, you just declare bankruptcy. It's hilarious. Always back yourself. Yeah. yeah. A-B-Y. Always back yourself. That's what Tom Miller says, you know? It's true. Yeah. And James Boyd should be a passport shredder. James Boyd should be a passport shredder. <laughs> Once he gets back with yeah. him. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh yeah, do your best to become a real person. So work on things like being self-reflective uh, and uh, self-aware, you know? Because, you know, once you know you're being a jerk, you can do something to change them. It's like, well, you know where they're being jerks. You're a jerk. Yeah.